the Solutions Plus module about charging solutions for electric buses. My name is Lauke Spetersen and I'm Segment Marketing Manager at ABB eMobility. So the outline of this course is that we will look at two dominant charging solutions for electric buses. One is overnight charging and the other one is opportunity charging. And after this module, you should be able to explain the benefits of opportunity and overnight charging for electric buses and choose which is the best one for your project. But first, let's quickly introduce ABB eMobility. As ABB, we have a decade of experience in eMobility. We have sold more than 14,000 chargers across the globe, um, actually in 80 plus countries. And in 2010, we started with Europe's first commercial DC charger. And since then, we have added a lot of bus projects. Project. And currently, we have more than five years of experience in running bus projects. We work with the most uh, biggest OEMs in the world, but also with local OEMs. And actually, we have, or this is a picture of our facility in Delft, where we can drive an entire bus inside of the building to do testing. And we span uh, a portfolio across the entire connection options from all-in-ones to Pentcraft up and Pentcraft down. But more about that later. So let's take a look at the electric bus charging landscape. What, uh, like I said, there are two, mainly two dominant ways of charging electric buses. The first one is overnight charging at depots, and the second one is opportunity charging on route throughout the city. The first one, but the first point to take a look at is really important. What is needed for your situation? So we have a couple of questions that you might answer in the beginning. Like, what is the length of the routes that are planned to be electrified? Or what is the elevation in the route? And what has, uh, how big is the impact on the energy use? So you can imagine that going uphill and downhill has a different impact than just a flat ter uh, terrain. What's the ambient tem temperature? And what are the variations throughout the year? A lot of snow, a lot of very cold uh, temperatures, or a lot of heat and a lot of cooling. And what is the frequency of the bus use? Do they drive around all day, like an airport shuttle? Or is it more like a school bus, where the, the focus is on two peak moments during the day? These questions and many more will de determine what kind of technology fits the best for your situation, like overnight charging, opportunity charging, or what we also see a lot, a combination of overnight and opportunity charging. So going back to the landscape, we first look at overnight charging at the depot. But why would you use overnight charging? Well, what we see is that most buses during the night are going back to the depot, um, as most public transport is, uh, is open during the day, routes are during the day, people go to work during the day, and there's a lot of time that these buses are parked, so between six and eight hours. And due to this large time frame, charging power can be quite low, which is better for the battery lifetime. Um, another thing is that before most buses start, um, they would require some preconditioning, um, either to heat up in cold environments or cool down um, in really hot environments to make sure it's really nice and a nice place for the bus driver and for the passengers. So within overnight charging, there are two dominant ways. One is conductive charging, the other one is pantograph charging. Let's first look at conductive charging. Actually, conductive charging is everything that's just using a cable and a connector to make the connection between a bus and a charger. There are various ways to do that. So, for example, we have all-in-one systems, where the power conversion from AC to DC and the connector and the screen is attached, uh, it's just all in one cabinet, like the picture on the left. We also have split systems, where the power conversion from AC to DC and going up to higher powers um, it's done in a uh, separate power cabinet and the connector that is connected to the bus is very slim, it's small and it, is, it can be positioned next to the bus. In spaces where you really have a uh, little space, um, we can also have roof mounted charging systems. They can be safely up the roof so the bus can never hit it and the buses can be really parked tightly together. A special version of overnight charging is sequential charging. And why is this, how this works and why is this important? 
So how it works is that you can see the power cabinet can feed up to three different outlets. And how it works is that it first starts giving its power to the first bus. When that battery is full, it goes to the, it starts with the second and after one, the third. And this really reduces the, the, the peak load that we have on the grid connection, but also the amount of power that needs to be installed in power cabinets and charging solutions is much lower because we can use it by multiple buses because we do have the time during the night to charge with uh, uh, charge one bus by one. So this is a very cost-effective solution and also a good solution when grid power is really limited. Another section of overnight charging is using pantographs. Um, this is a system where you don't have a connector, but a pantograph that will um, is either fixed on the top of the bus or it's fixed on the roof and will attach to um, bus bars on the uh, like bars on the bus. Um, we'll go later in depth how this works. But these are very uh, yeah also very suitable uh, solutions and especially very future proof for uh, when autonomous driver uh, driving will kick in as you don't need anyone to plug in a cable and start the charge. So looking back now to the uh, bus charging lights, okay, we go into the second option, opportunity charging. So why would you use opportunity charging? Opportunity charging is really nice when like, for example, the route is too long um, that the bus daily, uh, every day has to do um, is too long um, for the battery range um, and you need some, some, some extra additional charges or recharges the battery during the day or when the bus is like non-stop driving for example in that airport shuttle uh, example then you can do really short um, charging uh, cycles really short pulses three to six minutes where the bus uh, yeah, arrives at the charger, um, the, char the bench cross comes down and people can still um, get in and get out while the bus is being charged. So th this is why also charging power is usually much higher from 150 to up to 600 kilowatts. Another advantage can be that you can position like one or two opportunity chargers throughout the city or at the bus depot and have multiple locations. So peak power is also spread over the, uh, throughout the city. So if at the depot you don't have a lot of power or you have to wait like two or three years, this can be a solution to deal with that. So with an opportunity charging, we also have two dominant systems. One is pentagraph up, the other one is pentagraph down. Let's dive into how that works. But first, let's think about how this opportunity opportunity charging with the pentagraph actually works. Um, so how it works is it starts with the first step. So the bus of course has to arrive at the stop. When it does that, it will make a connection via Wi-Fi between the bus and the charger. So these two communicate and say, okay, I want to charge. Um, so the second step is that the, the pentagraph comes down and will attach to rails that are attached on top of the bus. So via this metal on metal connection, the, can, the power can start flowing from the charger to the uh, battery of the bus. The third step is that the bus driver sees, uh, in, uh, sees the, uh, the charge progress um, and thinks and uh, knows when to stop or when to uh, continue its route. For example, if everyone is into the bus and the three minutes uh, is ended, he wants to leave again. Oh, um, the fourth step is uh, that the bus drives away. Um, but first, of course, sensor check if the bus is not connected to the pentagraph anymore. The pentagraph is uh, rejected safely and the, the bus can safely drive away and continue its route. So, like I said, there are two, in, in, in opportunity charging with the pentagraph, there are two main options, or two options at all. Pentagraph down, pentagraph up. And in the pictures here, you can see the differences. I will go a bit more to the middle. Um, on the left, you can see a pentagraph down system where everything is attached to the, to the pole and also the weight of the system is on the pole. Um, one system, we call it, this system is called the opcharge and all standards are united within that 
charge uh, uh, yeah, system. Power is usually between 150 to 600 kilowatts. On the right side, you can see an up, uh, benchcraft up system, where the benchcraft is attached to, to the bus, and like this hood, it's attached to a pole, um, and if the bus arrives, the, the, the benchcraft goes up and will uh, make connection via uh, bars that are placed within that uh, pole, uh, dome. Um, so the weight is on the bus, um, it of course has all the standard but not such a specific and well defined standard as with the upcharge um, and also the power is around the same between 150 and 600 kilowatts. So as a summary, um, we have identified the two main ways of charging solutions for electric buses. On the one hand we have opportunity charging, on the other hand we have overnight charging. So overnight charging usually has low power, long charging sessions and is centralized at depots uh, to charge a bus during the night. On the other hand, opportunity charging usually use high power as short charging sessions during in and get, getting in and out of our, at the end of a route um, and is usually placed at decentralized places across the city. And before we close this, uh, this, this, this module, I want to give you one key takeaway and that is while setting up a system with, uh, with electric buses and of course charging solutions, it's very key to check that these uh, two systems communicate in the right way together, as you can see in the middle. It's really, it's really about a handshake and a good communication between the two uh, parts of the system. Um, and it's therefore very important to choose a charging manufacturer um, that knows how to deal with this interop, uh, interoperability and really has a lot of experience like ABB to make sure that the connection between the bus and the charging solutions always work. We see that in, in reality, in most operations, there are quite some issues, unless, even though everything is well recorded in standards, there's always a different explanation of these standards. There are always some small changes, and it's very key that, um, uh, that the, 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 the provider of the charging solution recently has a, a good local presence and a lot of experience with interrupt. Saying that, um, I really want to thank you for your attention um, about the module for charging solutions for electric buses and I wish you good luck with the next module.